Greetings and a warm welcome to this lovely, splendid Sunday. Thank you so much for being a part of this broadcast today. Today is a lovely day. It's a beautiful Sunday morning and we had such a lovely time last week in the presence of God where we communed on Passover Sunday. And we're so grateful to God for entering us into this newness as we partook of His body and we drank His blood that has the new covenant. Thank you so much for connecting with your families and gathering around as we're about to receive ministration from God's friend, Prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa. Pastor Chikuni, we are in a new season. We had our communion last week. Today we're about to receive freshness Indeed, from Pastor the throne room of heaven. Indeed, Pastor SJ, we received life from Jesus Christ. We rose together with him. And indeed, this is a new beginning. And we really thank God for the wonderful time that we've been having with the voice, Prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa, over the last couple of weeks. And, you know, for once in my life, I feel happy to be me. And I thank God for me. And I believe it's the same with somebody out there. After hearing the voice, minister to us in times like this, in a time like this. And I really thank God for the ministration of the voice. Not just from the Passover weekend, but even the days before, the couple of Sundays before, and the weekdays before, it has just mm. been something else. It has indeed. We encourage you if you are settling in right now, just trying to get your bearings, uh, do so now. We are preparing to receive ministration from Prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa. And as you do that, we encourage you as well to share this stream. Let those you know, know that the prophet of God is about to minister to us this very special Sunday, this month of April. Now, I would like to encourage you as well, if you can hear us, please give us a thumbs up. If you can hear us and see us, please let us know by giving us a heart sign. Also, please furnish us with your location in the comment section. Let us know, where are you listening to us from would love to know that so share the stream make sure that you distribute this light to as many places as you can to as many friends and family that you love and care about you know pastor sj last sunday after the service i got a lot of messages when will baba be back on when will the voice be back on and he's back here this morning and wherever you are indeed like what pastor sj has just said share 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 ensure that somebody out there who really needs to hear from the voice hear the heart of god the voice of god gets that opportunity to hear from god this morning and that's what we are about mm. to partake of bible politics technology and the plague wow that was a heavy ministration that was so heavy last week there are things that we have taken for gr granted. There are things that we have not understood. And the voice comes and he starts explaining. You know, it's amazing how he aligns scripture to today. When you get to understand the pieces joined together from a biblical perspective and you get to then understand why certain things are happening how they are happening, what it is that God wants us to understand even as those things happen and what it is that we're supposed to be doing after we get that information. And it's, 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 it's amazing how the voice prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa broke it down. You know, if we start, we won't finish just trying to explain what we heard. But one, one of the things that I really loved was you look at the whole issue around technology and you have a man telling you, 5G is 5G. But we will move forward to 6G. And then he explains to you that they Corona... They may bring it with a different name. Exactly. But and still it will be an upgrade. Exactly. From the 5G. Yeah. And then he tells you Corona is Corona. Mm. And he explains. It's not just mentioning things. These are not assumptions. Corona is Corona. 
And we are here today with that understanding and knowing fully well that indeed God is walking this journey with us. And it's important that those that are connected this lovely Sunday will get out their notebooks. Indeed. Get out their pens. You wouldn't want to. This is, we're about to get into a class. Exactly. We're about to get into a moment where God is about to expose his heart to us. And we need to be ready to, most importantly, take instructions. Because as we've seen with the ministry of the prophet, with each delivery that he gives us, with each teaching that comes our way, there are always sets of instructions for us to follow. And uh, a big thank you to those that have been praying as we have been, as we were instructed by the voice of God to do last week. And um, the prayer point is still on. Please continue to pray. And this, this was it. We are praying for the will of God to prevail. And we are praying against the will of the enemy that he had tried to start to put into action, to be halted, to stop, and those plans to fall. So we encourage you to continue to pray in line with that. And so th these are the kind of instructions that we know we will get from the voice of God, even as he ministers. So pens, notebooks, absolute essentials. We encourage you right now to get those out, to uh, gather around, to make sure that the environment is, is conducive for you to pay um, maximum attention in this special moment. You know, one fact, every time the voice speaks, it is revelation after revelation. And the bulk of the time, you will not be able to take it all in. But having a pen and a paper, having that iPad, having that laptop, and making sure you are taking notes, I think it is very important. A lot of people have been, have been, have been wondering, I can't get the sermon after the message. It might happen. So please, Take your notes. Take your notes and make sure you write down next to every point that you hear from the voice. It's very important. It's very critical that you get every single word. And there's always a reason why the voice gives us instructions to do certain things even after the message. So you never know with today. So please, every word that comes out of the Absolutely mouth of the voice, critical. you yes. need to write it down. You need Absolutely. to try as much as possible. But also at the same time, be very careful that when the voice tells you, listen to me, look at me. Those are very, very important times that you need to consider. Look at him as he ministers and observe every expression that he gives. You never know, maybe prophetic. And also just a pointer, be careful in the comment section. You may have individuals that will come in and try and cause distraction um, by placing comments that have nothing to do with the dispensation of the word of God that we are going to be having and receiving this morning. So we encourage you to ignore those individuals. Don't even mind replying to them because as you engage in those conversations, you will lose what's actually happening, the greater thing that God is beginning to stir up even in this place that is that is going to be stirring up even as the man of God begins to minister. So we encourage you to focus your mind. Tell yourself that I'm here to listen to the word. And if anything comes in the comment section, if someone comes and begins to communicate a message that is not the same as what the man of God is ministering this morning, please just ignore that individual and carry on paying attention to the word of God is, is being delivered to us this morning. It's always important. You know, sometimes there are people that will come to make you miss that particular point that was meant for you as an individual mm -hmm. on the platform. Mm -hmm. Like what you've rightfully said, Pastor SJ. Mm -hmm. I think it's very, very important that sometimes we ignore because we place relevance by answering. Mm -hmm. We place relevance by or recognition or an element of being identified by the way we respond to certain comments. And yeah. it's very important that we understand why we are on the platform. And that is hearing the heart of God, yeah. hearing the voice, yeah. Prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa, speak into our lives. Yeah, it's absolutely right. Now we've gotten to that place where we are ready to receive from the voice of God. Um, 
But before we do, um, it's important that people connect with what's about to happen this morning. Exactly. You know, Pastor Ezzi, I've always believed, I've always believed that there's nothing for free. Even Jesus Christ paid the price. So whatever we do in the presence of God, we must understand a very powerful principle that enables us to enter into a certain level of, into a dimension where we are able to receive. And sacrifice is critical. Offering is critical. We don't enter into the presence of the Lord empty-handed. When we are about to hear from God, by faith we sow seeds. And we also get that opportunity to thank God for what he's been doing in our lives. Like I said the other time, your offering explains to me your understanding or your appreciation of the deposit that God has made into your life and the faith for the deposit that God is about to make into your life. So it's very important that whenever we come into the presence of the Lord, we sow a seed, we give an offering and we tap into the word. There are times when powerful points, things that are really applicable to us at this moment and you feel that this point has hit me hard, sow for it, sow for it. It's a principle, whatever you sow, hmm. that's what you reap. Absolutely. So please do make use of the details that are showing on your screen right now. Feel free to send your seed on those details. Um, use these specific ones. Don't use any other ones that maybe may come through other means. Use these specific details that are flighting on your screen right now. So let's sow our seeds. And as we do that, let us prepare ourselves to receive from the voice of God this special morning. So wherever you are, we just encourage you to begin to pray in your heart. Begin to pray in the spirit. Begin to let the Holy Spirit know that you want to understand today. Ask the Holy Spirit for understanding of the word. Ask him to allow you this morning to have greater focus and to give you a greater in-depth insight into what his prophet is about to give us this morning. So wherever you are, just get into a few seconds where you just begin to talk to the Holy Spirit and let him know that Spirit of God, help me to understand, help me to grasp what is about to be said this morning. I don't want to miss a single thing. My heart is open. My ears are open. Allow me to hear your voice speaking to me today. Wow. Now let us uh, get to that wonderful moment where we receive ministration of the word from the prophet of God, prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa. Father, would like to thank you so much for being a phenomenal shepherd in this time. Father, our Heavenly Father gave us his best, Jesus, and we know and we appreciate more and more that Jesus gave you as his best. And uh, Father, when you come to us like this, our hearts are filled with gladness. We celebrate the light that is about to come. Um, the people have just taken a moment to pray that the Holy Spirit gives them understanding and enlightenment as you share the Lord's heart with us this morning. Thank you, Father. Thank you so much, Pastors. I think you did a wonderful job by giving our people a chance to pray and to ask the Holy Spirit to give them understanding. Well, I'm glad to be here again. And um, I believe we are all excited to be sharing and to be hearing what God has for us. I would like to thank all of you that are part of this uh, broadcast and you have set aside time. It's a dedication and I understand as well that it is a seed. Whatever you give for the sake of the gospel, is a seed and uh, we really want to get straight into the word of God and bring understanding to our people and there is a lot that uh, um, I have for you so the best you can do after some few minutes is to just keep on praying while you're listening to me and making sure that nothing takes away your attention 
from the word of God. Nothing. Well, we want to investigate something very critical in the word of God, which I believe if we are to understand that that is going to bring a tremendous change. And we can't get to that level of understanding and not have our lives transformed. That's the kind of understanding that we want to search for this wonderful morning. The word of God is life. The word of God is uh, what we live by. Men shall not live by bread, bread alone, alone, but by every, every word, word that comes that out comes of the mouth exactly. of the Exactly. When God speaks and then by that we live. When you look at the operations of God, uh, the miracle that Jesus performed at Cana of Galilee during a wedding ceremony where he turned water into wine. When you study your Bible, you must get to that place where you begin to extract benefits from every statement or every miracle that Jesus performed. So that that miracle ceases to benefit only the people that were present when the miracle was performed. How do I become part of that event that took place during my absence. Because whatever Jesus did for those that were present, it was also done for our benefit. How do I make myself one? How do I enjoy the presence, the physical presence of Jesus on the earth? Knowing that he came thousands of years ago, even before you were born physically. But making myself one, because I desire so much to be present, to be sitting among us, the 5,000 that were fed, and enjoy that moment and be part of it and see him, how he multiplied the bread, how he multiplied the fish. Is there a way of bringing myself to that place and be able to visualize and to be able to partake of that miracle. It is possible. Because if whatever Jesus did was not just done for the people present, if it was also done for all of us to learn and to understand, then there must be a way that we can make ourselves part of it. Now, when Jesus turned water into wine, you and I know that that was a miracle that he performed. Mm. Oh, yes. Because mm. too many processes were bypassed. Yes. Mm. Okay. Yes. Yes. Right. Because you can never have such a product, have wine on the table mm -hmm. without having to go through sowing of the seed mm -hmm. in the field. Mm -hmm. And, 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 okay, let me not get into that for now. But what I want you to understand from that is God's ability, because it wasn't just about the water that Jesus turned into wine, our understanding should be, where do I come in? That wasn't my brother who was having that wedding. That wasn't my sister who was getting married. 
So how does that benefit me reading that in in the scripture? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. At what point am I going to become a beneficiary of that kind of an anointing upon Jesus? So that I can say I've had that same anointing work on my life. What do I learn from that? Mm. Mm. In so many places in scripture you can see that the water resembles the Holy Spirit. And in the yes. book of Revelation like we studied last time, God spoke to John and he said the water that you have seen mm-hmm. are the people. Now, when you read about Jesus turning water into wine, is letting us know of the ability that God has to turn us the people into something completely different the turning of water to into wine someone who is listening to me must understand that we are in that kind in that season where god can pick on a testless life and gives it a test wow wow a colorless life can be given color god has that ability that's the only way we can benefit from that miracle It wasn't about the water being turned into wine. If you are not the water, if you are not the wine, what has that to do with you? Where do I come in and how can I be part of that miracle? You must understand God's ability at any level. But when he touches you, he can introduce flavor into your lifestyle that wasn't there before he can do that so you must understand today as you are listening to me that you are listening to the voice that is coming from god and a miracle is about to be performed despite where you are where you are coming from how many things you have tried in the past There comes a moment when God says I'm about to perform a miracle. I will convert this thing into something completely different. He can do that if you are going to follow my teaching today. Wow. Water can be turned into wine. Watch this. Before Jesus could perform for a woman standing of the people you have not to be distracted by comments because those people they pretend like they don't understand what i'm saying mm-hmm. it's so deliberate mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and the moment you're hooked and you're talking about and you're conversing among us yourself i'm not stopping mm-hmm. 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 okay mm-hmm. this is why you see when we are live like this we try by all means we look at the comments but we we come quickly back to the word of god exactly right because mm-hmm. that's that's the main focus here mm-hmm. but listen there was a need for mary to educate the people around jesus hey, hey. on how to behave hey. she said gentlemen you have no why but whatever he tells you to do do it because she realized that when such a miracle is about to be performed you are most likely to ignore to be derailed to be distracted and then you end up listening to somebody who doesn't have the capacity to produce the miracle that you desire whatever he says not what everyone else is saying whatever he tells you to do do it so before that kind of a miracle can be performed there is need for the beneficiary of that miracle to be obedient you have to do as he says it's an amazing thing 
This is why most people you can't, it's very difficult to convert their lives into something that is significant because obedience must be part of that equation. People must be obedient first and foremost before the miracle worker can work out such a miracle. You have to follow what I'm going to be teaching on today. And believe you me, no matter what you see happening around you, your presence in the hands of Jesus, you can be changed. You can be transformed. Two things are going to happen. He will give you an appearance, a different color altogether. <laughs> Number two, test. Test. Wherever you go, people would want to associate with you because you flavor your environment. Test. A testless life. Hey, hey. He can perform that miracle. If water is listening to me today, yeah. get ready for that kind of a miracle. Oh, yes. Yes. It's an amazing thing that God is getting ready to do for his thank people. You, wow. Thank you. Let's mm. just focus on this pandemic. We must look at the God's intention God's future plan because I believe this attack that has befallen mankind is soon going to be followed by a wave of revival. There is going to be the move of God's power like never before. Mm. Ah, let me not share on that. Please do, please do. Let me please not share do, on that. Please do. Oh my please God. We want to know. Oh my God. Please uh, do. Please let us know. Father, please. Let's, let's move on into today's word. Okay? Father, please. Ha! Huh? Please. What is about to happen, Father? Oh! Please. Please. My God. Please let us know. Oh my God. Mm. I said it's a wave. Mm. And when that wave comes, people are going to ride on it. And how life is going to be accelerated. Oh, let me not touch on that as of now. Wow. Pastor, pastors, let's get into the <laughs> way. Okay. <laughs> there is a revival that is coming. Wow. Right? A, a powerful one. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank a you. powerful. I'll, I'll talk about the kind of anointing that God is going to release upon his people. Wow. You, 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 you'll be amazed. Mm. You'll be amazed. I'll come back. Oh, wow. I'll come back. Okay. We look forward to that, Father. We are so, we are so expectant. Yes. For that re revival. Exactly. Can, can we talk about the black man? Wow. <laughs> can wow. we talk about yeah. Africa? Yes, can we please. talk about mankind? <laughs> yes, please. Just a little bit. Yes, at me. least it's the black man. <laughs> at least it's a black man. Now we can move away from the revival. It's okay. <laughs> oh, not really because you are too special than any race, but because you have looked down upon yourself. Therefore, you need more attention. A black man needs to be attended to. A black man is not feeling well. The, the black man is sick. The black man has a disease. The black man needs to be treated. And this is the reason why we have to talk about him and see how we can help the black man recover. I would, I would want you to take us to the origins, the book of Genesis 27 and verse number 40. And then I will draw you back um, to chapter 11. 
Yes, and then I don't think we're going to read chapter 11. Let's just read 27 and verse number 40. The book of Genesis, chapter 27, verse 40. And by thy sword shalt thou live, hmm. and shalt serve thy brother. By thy sword shalt thou live. live. You will live by the sword. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And shalt serve thy brother. Mm. And it shall come to pass, when thou shalt have the dominion, that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. Mm. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Mm. The first important point that I would like our viewers to understand today is that what you've just read for them is a blessing. That was a blessing mm. that the father declared or pronounced or uttered over his son. That was a blessing. Now you must now begin to look into what was contained within that blessing that the father spoke over his son. Now, before we get into that, because there is something very um, necessary for us to draw out of that text with regards to the black man. Okay. But if you really study the origins of man, like I've already given I came I was sitting here and I shared about the first man that God created mm. in the garden mm. yes and we spoke about his complexion yes yes deriving that from the meaning of his name mm. yes which is mankind mm -hmm. Adam means mankind, mankind. it means rad, rad. or red mm. okay Yes. from red soil, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And that part we already established that in case some people may want to mm. get a hold of that teaching, it is already there, right? Yes. It was so the word digest. The word digest, word digest. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Where I spoke about Noah mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. uh, Enoch mm -hmm. yes. and so forth. So I would want you to make sure that you, you, you get access to that teaching. Indeed. But now my point was, the man who started it all was not a white man. And there has been an attempt to rewrite history by the white man. Somebody out there has a desire. There is quite a good number of people that have made this their vision, their agenda, to want to rewrite the origins of men just so that we can have a new beginning where you no longer have a red man or a black man originating the human race. They are doing everything possible to make sure that we have a new start where we don't have to consider a black man being in existence before. Let's find a place somewhere where we can start. Let's read this book from page 13. And skip all the other lists. Let's delete the past. Mm. Let's delete the history. There is something that irritates some people out there mm. concerning the origins of men. 
Mm. Now, if you study the book of Genesis, even chapter 11 going down, I just want to explain it to you. It talks about the whole earth that it was of one language and of one speech. Mm -hmm. The whole earth from the beginning mm. had one language. language and one speech. speech. Mm. <laughs> and then they began to migrate from the east. And they came to the land of Shina, which is in Babylon. And there they discovered a plain. There was a land which they perceived as good for them. They said, this is a good place for us. Let us stay here and not just stay here. Let us build a city. And right at the center of the city, let us have a tower that reaches into the heavens. Right? Yes. yes. Now, the city and the tower had no name mm. because it was named after the confusion that then took place. Babel, meaning confusion, but originally it wasn't confusion. It was a city and a tower. They said, we have to do this for two reasons. That we are not scattered abroad. And let's do it again. For the sake of our name. For our name's sake. So they went on to sit down and to discuss. And they said we must have stones. We use those as bricks. And then we can create mortar. And let us build a city. And as they were starting to work on this project, the Bible says that, and God came down to see. <laughs> ah, it's an amazing thing. You say, no, it's one thing to have people mm. going right now to Dubai mm. <laughs> just so that they can have a look at this tallest building in the world. Mm. But getting God to come having something that you can create that can attract God as a tourist. Eh. Mm. Having God coming to assess your work. Mm. That was an amazing thing mm. wow. that mankind mm. was about to do. God said, let us go down and see what this, these people are doing. And when God came and he looked at what man was busy doing, he discovered something, God himself, an all-knowing God. <laughs> ha! He said that these people are one. These people are one. And nothing shall be restrained from them. Mm. Hey. even whatsoever they have imagined. Mm. Ah, child of God, hear this and hear this. Hear this. God is saying, whatsoever they have imagined, these people have an ability to imagine a thing and to bring about their imaginations. From imagining it and now they've gone to into creating what they have imagined and nothing shall stop them. And he's saying the reason why nothing can stop them it is because they are one and they have one speech. 
God is telling nations one thing that can make them expand, explode, mm. and become a formidable force. But nothing can come against you as long as you can imagine it and have one speech convert your imagination into one statement, one speech, and not contradict each other. God himself is saying, nothing of all the forces available, mm. even the presence of the devil cannot stop such a project mm. because of the level of unity. Mm. Even, you see, they had not prayed about, they had imagined it. Imagine mm. imagining a project mm. and getting to accomplish the project without even praying for the project without even raising your hands and asking God to intervene. God, help us build the city. They didn't ask God for that kind of help because they realized that that kind of help had already been given by God in form of unity. Hey. Mm. Unity. Hey. Hey. Hence, there was no need for them to ask God again for any external aid because when God gave you one language, one speech and unity. He had already supported any project that you may want to embark on as a nation. Here comes God. He sees them building. And God said, "For the only thing that we can use here to stop this project from going on is helping these people not to understand each other's speech. It is there in the book. Let us give them several other languages. Mm. Ah, Verse 7 mm -hmm. of chapter 11 of Genesis. Mm -hmm. Go to, mm. let us go down. Let us go down. And they confound, confound their language. Their language. That they may not understand. You see? Understand. That mm. they may not understand. Uh, one another's speech. One another's speech. speech. <laughs> if we can get them not to understand, because what I'm doing right now, I'm giving a speech. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that is going to destroy Africa is their failure to understand my speech. Because whenever I speak, somebody is listening to me right now. Yes. Instead of hearing what I'm saying, they're not getting it. Somebody gets angry. Just a few minutes into the teaching right now. Failure to understand the speech. Let us give them several other languages different visions, different agendas. When I'm speaking, a doctor hears something completely different. When I'm speaking the same speech, a politician hears something completely mm. different. Yes. A teacher hears something completely different, different as well. Right? Yes. yes. Because of difference in speech. Mm. Mm. Right. But you see what is happening there. God wants to divide them by dividing their focus. This is why we have two manifestations in the Bible, like in the book of Genesis chapter number 11, at the Tower of Babel, where God brought down different languages. Mm -hmm. It was so that he would divide the people. And there was a restoration of languages in chapter number two of the book of Acts. Mm. Right? Mm. When they were again mm -hmm. in a tower in the upper room wow. praying. Wow. And several languages were given. Mm. But that was for unity in the book mm. of Acts. And in the book of Genesis, that was for division. Now, the Holy Spirit, when he comes, even in our diverse languages, in our different kinds of speech, somehow he is the uniter. 
when the spirit of god comes we are somehow united no matter the language that you are speaking okay so i want people to get this point here what is stopping us from progressing as the human race is failure to understand one when he gives out his speech <laughs> now if you want to get deeper into that you go back to chapter number 10 you look at verse number 8 you will see that the one in charge of that project was called Nimrod and Nimrod was a son to Cush mm. and Cush was black mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it means black mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's how he started his empire, how he started his kingdom, Nimrod. Right. But what I want you to understand now is, they are building a city and there is a tower and God is coming down and he stopped that project by making sure that people don't understand each other's speech. Okay. Let me get to the scripture that we have just read. Genesis 27. Something very interesting is taking place in chapter number 25. Isaac marries a woman by the name Rebecca. Let me slow down a little bit. He was 40 years of age when he married Rebecca. And at Sikisti, he then prayed for Rebecca because she was barren. She could not conceive. And Isaac entreated the Lord, prayed for Rebecca, asked God to deliver Rebecca from this affliction. And she got delivered from the spirit or from the condition of barrenness. And then she became pregnant. Not only as a result of intercourse. No, but as a result of prayer. 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 Oh, <laughs> notice something here. This Rebecca was going to be forever barren. Had she not married the right man? <laughs> Had she married a man who can only sleep with her? A man who specializes in only in that area. She was never going to conceive. Mm. Because according to her condition, that is not all that she wanted. She needed an intercessor who knew how to navigate the spiritual terrain first before sowing a physical seed into her body. So the man had to be specialized in spiritual matters and physical matters. In a, in a prayer room and also in the bedroom for her to conceive. So barrenness sometimes is determined by association. Had she married a man who is not good at communing with God and only good at communing with her physically, 
she was never going to conceive. So I'm just saying here, barrenness sometimes is determined. You see, you can be somebody who was never meant to conceive, but when you attach yourself, identify a man of God or a woman of God, that God has given an anointing. You will find yourself doing things that you were never meant to do, not because you were born with that capacity or potential, no, but because of association. Mm -hmm. Indeed, There are certain people that when you get in touch with, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you begin producing as if you were never barren before. Yes. Yes. Yet you are still barren. Yes. Had you gone to a wrong man of God, mm. you were never going to conceive. Had you gone to a wrong church, you were never going to conceive. So it's very important that we understand that part, that your barrenness is prolonged by your associations. Mm. Isaac prayed for Rebecca. And then she conceived. Oh, I can go on and on and on on that one. It's an amazing formula. Revelation. <laughs> Revelation. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> ah, wow. Now, hmm. she's getting something. Again, number two. He got married at 40. Then she conceived when he was now 60. So that is 20 years of barrenness imagine how many times they were coming together during the, 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 those 20 years several times it she never conceived until Isaac made it a prayer point and said God I need your involvement if my wife is ever going to be fruitful you have to be part of this union And after 20 years of people laughing at you. And all those 20 years were caused by Isaac, who chose to pray after 20 years. He prayed after 20 years. Because the moment he prayed, then she conceived. You can be broke, you can be poor, you can be sick forever until Isaac makes a decision that it has to end today. And who is that person that when he prays, your calamity ceases immediately? Mm. Then she conceived. Then there was a struggle in the tummy. This pregnancy caused a lot of unrest. She could not sleep. She could no longer go to work because of a fight. Okay, you have it in your scriptures. So that we, 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 I want to show our people something here. Thank you so much, my father. Mm -hmm. The book of Genesis, chapter 25. Allow me to start from verse 21, mm -hmm. where Isaac entreated the Lord. Yes. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife mm -hmm. because she was barren. Mm -hmm. And the Lord was entreated of him. Mm. And Rebekah, his wife, mm. conceived. Yes. And the children struggled together mm. within her. And the children mm. struggled together mm. within her. Mm. Ah, if you have got, if you have strong, I want you just to punch the word struggle. The word struggled. Mm. <laughs> something very interesting here wow oh my god the word struggled and strong is a struggle together mm -hmm. to crush mm -hmm. oppress those two words mm. so they began to crush mm. each other 
and oppress. Mm. Mm. I want you to see where oppression is starting from. Mm. 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 There is the mm. crushing mm. of each other mm. and there is the oppression of each other. Mm. And it is starting right in the womb. Okay. Yes. Now notice what is happening now. Mm. Because of what is happening within her womb, mm -hmm. she didn't this time go back to the man who had prayed for her. She went straight to the Lord mm. to inquire from the Lord. Pastors, we must get to that level where we are not the only source of information for our people. We must pray for our people to an extent where even if they start praying for themselves, they get answered by God. Wow. Isaac did his part, mm. prayed for his wife to mm. become pregnant. And when now the pregnancy was causing problems, a member of your ministry must learn to deal with the problems created by the miracle that you would have performed for them wow. in the name of the Lord. Wow. There are people like that. Mm. You, you bless them and the blessings can cause some problems. Mm. Okay? Mm. Yes, I know, I know couples that used to love each other as long as they were walking on foot. Until they got blessed, now they were driving a car. Mm. Now problems started. Mm. Yes, there are certain manifestations of the grace of God that can cause some problems. Anyway, but I'm saying she then went by herself to the Lord <laughs> to inquire because she has learned from the husband, this is what you do when you have a problem. Talk to God about it. And because of this conflict and oppression that was taking place in her womb, mm -hmm. she said, I rather go to God because mm -hmm. I know God intervened. Mm -hmm. He participated mm -hmm. in this whole thing. Let me go to God and ask. Uh -huh. She said, mm -hmm. if it be so, why am I thus? Where is she? <laughs> Where is she? Let's, let's, let's read it. Let's read it. Yeah, read it. And she went to inquire of the Lord. Exactly. Mm -hmm. She went to, to inquire, inquire of, the Lord. of the Lord. Yes. Mm -hmm. She's asking the Lord. All right. Read it all over again. I don't know if you miss something there. I'll take it from verse 22. Mm -hmm. And the children struggled together within her. Yes. And she said, mm. if it be so, mm -hmm. why am I thus? Why have I become pregnant if mm. this is the case? Yes. Yes. And she went to inquire of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Verse 23. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb. And the Lord said unto her, mm. which means the Lord spoke. Mm. And when the Lord spoke, whatever the Lord said was only heard by her. The Lord did not speak to them. Mm -hmm. Isaac was not present mm -hmm. when she inquired. Yes. And Isaac was not present when the Lord spoke unto her. Uh -huh. So whatever the Lord said, only her uh -huh. had what the Lord said. Uh -huh. mm. Mm. So now you have mm. a woman that you've married, that you once prayed for, knowing something that you don't know. Mm. She has had something that you haven't had from the Lord. Before we begin to talk about all the tricks that are going to be played in the future. Yes. Someone here knows something that someone doesn't know. Mm -hmm. Ah, my God. What did the Lord say? 
two nations the lord did not say twins the lord did not say you have children mm. the lord did not say you have two boys mm. the lord god said you have nations mm. not one <laughs> pastor to think that we can have an individual mm. containing nations one individual who has the capacity to contain two nations all at the same time mm. wow And this person ceases to be just a person. He has become a location. He is a territory yes. where two nations are contained. Yes. And now the oppression that is taking place, it's one nation oppressing the other nation mm. while it's in the territory called the womb. <laughs> <laughs> Let us listen to what the Lord is saying mm. again mm. to Rebecca. Uh-huh. And he said two And the Lord said unto her, uh-huh. Two nations are in thy womb. Okay. And two manna, two manna. Mm. Uh-huh. Of people. Of people. Mm. People, two manna. They are completely different from each other. Mm. And these are people. These are people. Mm. Uh-huh. two manner of people mm. shall be separated from thy bowels so they're only being united by your bowels as soon as they are birthed mm. they shall be separated so you are the only uniting factor hey. mm. you are bringing different nations together as an individual mm. ah my god <laughs> It is the work of somebody there is someone given that anointing by mm. God to unite to different people mm. together mm. but the moment they move away from you they are separated mm. 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 ah uh huh mm. read it and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels mm-hmm. and the one people shall be stronger the one people shall be stronger than the other people <laughs> oh my god so one nation shall be stronger than the other nation mm-hmm. one nation shall be stronger than the other nation mhm Listen, and listen to what God is saying here. Mm. Yeah? Uh-huh. And the elder, the elder, mm. you have to make sure that you are hearing that part. Yes. The elder. Mm. Uh-huh. Shall serve the younger. The elder shall serve the younger. Mm. What we are seeing happening here is a picture, it's an image. This is this is a drama. Mm. Of what not only is going to happen but what has already happened let me teach some people something yes please thank you where you have the elder brother mm. serving the young this is going to be an ongoing fight and this is going to be an issue revolving around supremacy mm. and god is giving a prophetic word to the one carrying different nations that what you are carrying you are carrying something big and you are carrying something small you are carrying something strong mm. and you are also carrying something very weak mm. but he goes on to say but the elder brother shall serve the elder shall serve the younger now he's talking about who was born first mm. 
Now, I can take you back again to the book of Genesis chapter number 2 mm. of the man that was originally created by God mm. who was red, mm. who was black. That no matter you were birthed at first mm. or you were the first one to be born, mm. yet something terrible is going to happen to the elder brother. Now, okay, let's talk about just <laughs> two races. Let's talk about the blacks. Let's talk about the whites. Yes. Now, if we are to agree, going by scripture, yes, that the first man that God created was not white, mm -hmm. right? Yes. The first man that God created was red, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Was dark, mm -hmm. was black, mm -hmm. yes. okay? Mm. That's red soil. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm -hmm. mm. yes. Legs are red soil. Mm. Yes. Yes. So if that is the case, then it means you were the firstborn. Hey. The older brother who is going to eventually save the younger one because of what the younger brother is going to do mistakes that the elder brother is going to make which will cause him to end up saving the rest that then came later after he was born so we have to learn our mistakes now where did we get it wrong so god is already giving a prophetic message to the woman that there's going to be the weaker one there's going to be the stronger one. But notice that the weaker is not going to become weak because he has been made weak by God. He is going to make wrong decisions that is going to weaken him. Wow. Mm. Oh. Okay, read it. Read it. Read it. Read it. Verse 24. Mm-hmm. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, mm. behold, behold, there were twins in her womb. Now there were those that beheld. These are the ones that said these are twins, not God. God did not mm. say twins. Mm. God said there are two, two nations. nations. Mm. And when two nations were born, those present said these are twins. twins. Mm. Let's go by what God said. Mm. Not by what the midwives said. said. They are calling them twins. God is calling them nations. nations. Uh -huh. Father, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. Verse 25. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the first came out red. You see, that red <laughs> is Adam. Wow. The first came out, out red. red. Because somebody already was going to begin to wonder, where does the black man come in here? Why are we talking about Africa and so on? Mm. We talk about Africa right there. Now, the first one that came first, the first one to appear even in the garden was red. Indeed. If you the elder in. brother, the big one. <laughs> the one that came first. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting excited. Oh, I, was, I, was I was checking it strong. Even myself, I'm about to stand up right now. Just jump out of my chair. See? The origin of that word, uh -huh. Father, is Adam. Mm. It is red. The original Hebrew word is Adam, if you go back in Strong's. Wow. Wow. So Adam was then birthed mm. by this woman. And this woman, if you really want to understand, imagine if God took you from the dust of the earth. I wonder sometimes why people call it Mother Nature. Mm. It is as though you were once conceived in the earth and the earth gave birth to you physically mm. and you were the first one to come out oh. the red man wow can you imagine now the first one we have to understand investigate this gentleman yeah. who is coming out his complexion mm. and he was a hairy man mm. So the red was not just the hair, yeah. but also the skin, skin. color wow. was red. Wow. And he came out first. Mm. <laughs> he was the first 
to come into the picture. You are following? I'm saying this is a drama that touches the past. It's a drama that touches the future. Mm. Uh -huh. The first came out red. Mm. All over like an hairy garment. Mm. And they called his name Esau. They called his name Esau. Esau. Yes. And after that came his brother out. Before that? After. After. After, after the red man. Mm. After uh -huh. came out his brother mm -hmm. and his hand, the hand took hold of the younger brother, mm. was holding Esau's heel. Esau's heel. Mm. Now, once you have the younger brother holding the elder brother's heel, mm. already you have a very nasty picture there. Mm. Because already you can see that the movement of the elder brother is going to be determined by the younger brother because the heel represents mobility Ooh. so yeah, wow yes, now yes yes uh, <sighs> wow so mm. wherever the elder brother shall go mm. who is going to determine the movement the younger, the younger brother the younger brother if ever africa is going to move forward I it is going to be by the decrees of the younger the brother. brother. Mm. Who is controlling every movement that you see in Africa? Mm. The younger it doesn't brother. matter you were the first one to come out. Yet your movement is being controlled and being monitored by the younger brother who came out last. He's not touching your brain. But he's controlling your movement, your feet. Mm. Learn whatever you want to learn. Go build as many schools as you want. But you can never move an inch unless the younger brother says so. Keep on reading. And his name was called Jacob. Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she bare them. Sixty years. Mm. Yes. And the boys grew. Mm. And Esau was a cunning hunter. Esau, the first boy, mm. was a cunning hunter. Hunter. <laughs> Africa uh, for you, my brothers. Wow. <laughs> cunning wow. hunter. This was a <sighs> bushman. Wow. He was a cunning hunter. That's all that he knew to do. He was a cunning hunter. Esau was a cunning hunter. Mm. Now you're about to hear of his area mm. of profession where he would be more active. Yes. A man of the field. Man of the field. Mm. So you see, already you can see that when you talk of hunting and you talk of fields, even agriculture, mm. This firstborn, he was given this as his profession. He was given that area. All right. So he's good at hunting. Yes. He specializes in fields. Mm. Give him mountains, give him valleys. Oh, wow. he's the best. Uh huh. And Jacob was a plain man plain man straightforward very calm mm. perfect and if you study that you'll see that mentally he was very sharp mm. uh -huh. a plain man mm -hmm. dwelling where in, dwelling in, in tents. tents now when you begin to talk about tents now we're talking about habitations mm. we're talking about infrastructures wow you're talking about construction of <laughs> systems <laughs> This is amazing. Yeah. Ah. Ah. It's becoming clear. We we're never worried about building beautiful houses. It was the younger brother mm. who specializes in that. Yeah. What we wanted was just to hunt. Exactly. Mm. And mm? indeed, the African was called the hunter and the gatherer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 oh, my mm. God. Wow. Jacob is into structures, mm. the pitching of the tents, mm. putting up systems. Ay, 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 ay. 
understand? Isaac loved Esau mm. because he did eat of his venison. Mm. But Rebecca loved Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> Aya, 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 aya. Okay, <laughs> And Jacob oh. sawed pottage. And Jacob, Jacob. Uh-huh. sawed pottage. Mm. And Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Jacob, what? Sawed, sawed pottage. Uh huh. And Esau came from the field. So. There is already you can see mm. what the younger brother the weaker nation did mm. prepared portage whilst the elder brother was in the field mm. busy hunting for raw materials then he comes what is happening to him Esau came from the field and he was faint Esau came mm. from the field mm. and he was faint. Faint. faint yes and Esau said to Jacob now this is Esau mm. now look at how the elder brother started all this <laughs> galim mentality <laughs> where you have the elder brother begging mm. for food for aid hey hey mm. external assistance mm. foreign investment yet you are the bigger brother mm. cuz you are fainting mm. you are coming from the most resourceful place you own the forest you own the fields you own the land and you get to a man who is prepared because you because Jacob was an organized man he knew how to package yeah. the product in a pot hmm. he made it so attractive to the african brother hmm. the red gentleman He looked at his own product that is coming from his own field. He couldn't recognize it. Mm. There was difference. Mm. And if you study that pottage, it was red pottage. <laughs> so it was tailor made to attract mm. the red men. Mm. They have a way of packaging products that are coming from Africa mm-hmm. and we end up begging mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and spending money. Mm buying materials that have come from our that own have fields from us. Yes. Mm. Now look at what the red man is doing. Mm. Uh-huh. And Esau said to Jacob, he said unto Jacob, feed me. Feed me. Mm. Now let's delete Esau. Let us delete Jacob. We are talking of two nations here. Now you have one nation that was birthed first. Mm begging another nation which is young please feed me feed me feed me feed me. Oh, oh my god oh my god feed me mm. you want to be fed okay rido i pray thee mm-hmm. with that same red pottage feed me with that same red pottage supply me help me because i'm fainting that same same why same it is the same product but now it has been treated what they call value addition now the owner of the field Is come to the younger brother and is begging please feed me feed me yes with that same red 
pottage mm -hmm. for i am faint i'm fainting therefore was his name called edom his name was called what edom, edom. you click edom the word edom edom mm -hmm. means red again so before he was called Esau. right oh yes but because of his behavior consumptive behavior <laughs> he ah! confirmed he got another name called Edom. Mm -hmm. also you will notice all these guys later on their names changed jacob was later called israel, israel. now so now we are already talking about two generations that are coming yes because if you study very well your scriptures you notice that when god said the elder brother shall save the young. Yeah. That never happened between those two brothers. Uh -huh. Esau never at any time mm, saved, saved Jacob. Jacob. Mm. Never. No. Never. You study your Bible. When Jacob was yes. coming back from Lab Laban with all those possessions, mm. he even wanted to give to his brother and Esau. And Esau, Esau said, Esau said okay. I've got everything. I'm okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm fine. So if the two of them never saved each other, it means that declaration was over nations, which means Edom was going to serve mm. the Israelites. The red man was going to serve the white man. Because the Edomites then came, they occupied the uh, south part of Palestine. Mm. And if you study the history, they then served the descendants of Jacob. So it wasn't about individual prophecies it was about national prophecies mm. so stay with me on this because we're not talking about individuals here we're talking about nations so when you see a nation when you see yeah. Esau begging for pottage from jacob you're looking at the nation the entire nation begging an inferior in terms of rights mm -hmm. an inferior nation for help help me feed me oh. okay look at this oh. oh can you imagine that if the cure is going to come the red man is at the mercy of the younger brother mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we are waiting for the medication right now to be discovered yes it's true we're just waiting, hoping and praying that they come up with something. It's true. Feed me. Yeah. Feed me. Look at how much we put into the health sector as Africa. Yes. Look at how much we put into research. We have all the plants, we have all the grass, we have all the roots, the leaves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Within our soil, healing mm -hmm. is contained. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they have to come and get it from Africa and process it and give it back to us as solutions. Feed me. Hear what the bigger brother is saying. Feed me. Feed me. Because I'm fainting. I'm sick. I have a disease. Vaccinate me. We have to wait for them to save us. Mm. It's a shame. Oh my God. Eish. Mm -hmm. Verse 31. And Jacob said, Look at him now. So, so that you understand, this man was very smart mentally. He knows what to do, he knows what to say. Watch that. Sell me this day. What? Sell me. You hear that, that term sell? Yes. It's a mm -hmm. business term. Mm -hmm. The red guy is asking for the pottage, lentils, beans, begging for it. And then the younger brother said, let's get into some form of agreements here. Mm -hmm. Sell. Sell. Which means Jacob or another 
smaller nation is getting ready to buy something that is going to make that nation greater. Mm. And the greater nation is about to lose something that made it greater. Mm. Sell. So Jacob was very smart. He waited for that opportunity where Africa was so desperate, mm. fainting, mm. needing help, and something was packaged. And Jacob did not eat it because they're not ready to consume what they've created. They are creating it for mm. Africa. Mm. Mm. That's true. Oh God. I'm really touched by what you're saying. To look at it from this angle, that when Esau is coming in, he's hungry. And already pottage has been made mm -hmm. for him. Mm -hmm. And you made reference to the term same, mm -hmm. same, same. When he is receiving, it's for consumption to feed a need that is already there. Mm -hmm. So in, in other words, there will be no porridge after he finishes eating it. Definitely. And because there is no porridge. For Jacob to have porridge again next time, he has to get into the field. Yeah. <clears throat> Jacob has to go to Africa again. Yeah. And, and bring materials from there, process them, and wait for the desperate brother to come back again. To come again. But now in this case now, he is saying, we cannot have this transaction unless you sell. You have to sell because it means that all, all this while, the nation, this other race, always wanted to come out first they always wanted to be the first ones mm -hmm. in existence mm -hmm. that's why when the first one came jacob was holding the heel yeah. trying hey, to pull back mm, let me be the first. first one so this has been the fight until today somebody still wants to originate the human race yeah so he's saying i lost the battle at creation at birth, you came out first as the red man. But I'll come up with a strategy hey. that will still belittle you. You can still sell me mm. that right. And I can legitimately become the firstborn. Mm. Hey. Let's have an agreement. Mm. Sell me. What is Jacob mm. getting ready to buy? Mm. from Esau. Uh -huh. Sell me this day. Today. This day. Yes. Thy birthright. So right at this moment, everyone has to understand that rights can be sold. Mm. It's a product mm. that Africa is selling. Pastors, pastors, we are not just talking about birth. It's a combination of two words, birth and right. 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 So when God created the red man and he allowed you to have access to the earth first, mm. what he gave to you was a right. right. Mm. Hey. Mm. Which now... The man that came later is mm. getting ready to buy from the man that came first. first. Why? Because the first man is so desperate. He thinks that if he doesn't get something to eat immediately, he's going to die. Mm. 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 That's an African mentality. Mm. Mm. Oh my God. <laughs> Sell me the birth right when this day because he knows tomorrow mm. this guy if he's going to just delay to satisfy his greed tomorrow i can never strike this deal africa makes decisions based on their temporal calamity problems they are faced with today they can't see tomorrow it has to be today while they're still hungry 
let's do this right now let's seal up the deal give me the birthright and i will give you the product the portage the red it suits very well with you we designed it according to your appetite so jacob had a way of understanding the appetite of the red man you know this man is greed and when he's hungry he makes silly decisions it will destroy his children in the future but today if you can get him to sign the paperwork today he can sign it as long as he is in a desperate state sell the right mm. why because the one buying always wanted to be the first yes. born mm. <laughs> my god okay so keep, keep, keep on reading keep on reading. see something there very very critical yes verse 32 mm -hmm. and Esau said behold mm. i am at the point to die i'm dying behold see mm. Mm. i'm almost dying mm. Mm -hmm. and what profit shall this birthright That's a business term like profit mm. so to mm. him he cannot derive any profit from the right hey <laughs> africans cannot count their right mm. as profit deriving profit out of the right Mm. <laughs> he's saying what what oh my god there is no profit in the right because mm. i'm dying yet someone is looking at this man he knows this man is more valuable because of the right and this thing is never going to kill him that's what he's saying today because he knows tomorrow this guy is still going to be around I have to strike the deal right away. We believe if we we don't get help from outside, we're going to die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. that's what we believe. We are going to die. We are about to die. Let's say have somebody come in and help us because otherwise we die. So the porridge, the soup was properly made. And Jacob knew that that man is so greed, so desperate, he lacks patience. And he waited for him to come and beg. Mm. And in exchange, I will get the rights. Mm -hmm. Read it again. Verse 31. Mm -hmm. Verse 30. And Esau said to Jacob, mm. Feed me, mm -hmm. I pray thee, yes. with that same red pottage, mm -hmm. for I am faint. Mm. Therefore was his name called Edom. And Jacob said, Sell me this day mm. thy birthright. Mm. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die. Mm. And what profit shall this birthright do to me mm. and jacob said swear to me this mm. day mm. and he swore unto him mm. and he sold his birthright unto jacob and he sold, sold his birthright unto who? Jacob. jacob verse 34 mm -hmm. and jacob gave esau bread and pottage of lentils and he did eat and drink. Look at what he gave to him. Thus, Esau despised you his what? birthright. He despised mm. his birthright. He despised his birthright. No one is teaching us on this birthright, mm. Mm. which gives us an advantage. Yet the people that came later sat down and realized that that's a right. Mm. Let's go for it. And the chapter ends there, right? Yes. <laughs> and now when you get into chapter 27, the father is getting ready to bless the one he thought was still yeah. 
the firstborn. Mm. Some people may think that Jacob cheated. Yes. Some people may think that even Rebecca also cheated. conspired and mm-hmm. cheated. Mm-hmm. Yet that transaction was sealed even in the heavens. Now here comes a moment where the father is getting ready to bless the firstborn yes. who is no longer the firstborn. Because mm. when the transaction took place, the father wasn't present. So he's assuming mm. that Africa is still the giant. Mm. Then he invites the red man, the firstborn, the one who came out first. And he said, go get me venison meat mm. from the field, from the forest, yes. so that my soul mm. can bless you. Mm. The father is getting ready to bless the firstborn. Then he tells the man in charge of the forest, go get me some venison. You own that territory. Hey! God himself is getting ready to bless the red man. But look at what is happening here. Then, Rebecca had it when Isaac sent Esau to go out and get meat for him. And then she went to Jacob the weaker one, the one she thought was the last born. But because she had heard from the Lord that the elder brother will save the younger. So she's getting ready to facilitate the process in ensuring that the blessing gets to the younger one so that the elder brother can save the young brother. So she says to Jacob, you know, you are different from this one. This one gets things from the forest, very raw. You get into these GMOs, huh? domestic animals. That's your area. Go there, we can do this very fast, fast foods, very, very mm, fast. Mm, mm. While your brother is still in the forest trying to extract the materials, you have it already close by. Bring it, let me prepare it. We present it before the father and you get the blessing. <laughs> and what was cooked and prepared there was not genuine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, they modified mm-hmm. yes. mm-hmm. the venison. Yes. It wasn't the real thing. No. Mm. It was a modification. Yes. The real thing was in the forest owned by the red man. You've never been to some of these countries. Get into their shop. Buy meat. Notice the meat that comes from Africa. How expensive that meat is. Test it, the test. The beef that comes from Africa. There you, you, you eat, it. it's like you're eating papers. It, it is beef. But hear this, I want, some, I want some people to learn this, to understand this part. They took it, they prepared it, the goat or the sheep. They prepared it for the father and, and then 
the mother said go and give it to your father so that he blesses you and then jacob said my mother if if my father discovers that i have cheated him he's going to place a case over me and the mother said if it's a case let it come over me but the blessing you have it i want you to get the blessing and then jacob said ah, but mama i i you realize that uh, my brother is hairy mm. if my father touches me and there's mm. a difference mm -hmm. i get cursed for that mm -hmm. mm. she said don't worry about that and she knew that god was going to intervene because she had heard from the lord who is going to become greater so they prepared and then she took the the skin of the sheep or of the god placed it on the hands of jacob and then covered also the neck where she knew that isaac was going to touch then venison was presented and the and jacob said my father i've come and the father said who is this and jacob said i am your son which one he said esau your son ah and isaac said how come today you found it too early too early Mm. which means according to Isaac he realized there was something wrong with mm. Mm. the red man mm. too slow mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. too slow <laughs> <laughs> you have it but too slow. slow he said how come today you got it so fast mm. that's 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 against your nature the yeah. red man and then he then lied to his father he said the Lord your God brought it to me. And he said, okay, come close. And he touched his hands, his neck. And he said, the voice is like that of Jacob. But the skin is that of Esau. Ha! And the Bible says, and he descended not. Is it amazing, pastors, that if the voice is that of Jacob and the skin is that of Esau, why didn't you say to this Esau, go and call Jacob? Mm. Oh, yes. mm. why, why didn't yeah. you wait yeah. and verify? <laughs> yes. yes. You can't have Jacob's voice and you have Esau's skin, skin. in one place. Mm not not delay not postpone the the ceremony he still went on to bless <laughs> ah my god give me the meat he ate and then he said come kiss me and isaac was kissed by the younger brother and then he began to bless and the mother had done a great job by putting on even clothes that belonged to esau of Jacob and the father said I can smell the smell of the forest and he began to bless and he within the blessing he made his brethren to save him mm. and he was made lord over his brothers and his sisters mm. by declarations father allow me to read that yes verse 29 of the 27th chapter of Genesis mm -hmm. let people serve thee mm. and nations bow down to thee mm. be lord lord over thy brethren mm -hmm. and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee thy mother's sons let them bow down to thee you see now the fulfillment of what God had said to Rebecca yes that day yes it's happening now. Mm. Yes. Cursed be everyone that curseth thee. You see? Mm. Mm -hmm. And blessed be he that blesseth thee. <sighs> Pastor, I want you to read again verse number 40. Chapter 27, verse number 40. The one that we read first. I'll read Genesis 27, verse number 40. And by thy sword shall ah. thou live. Pastor, I think maybe if you start from verse 
Uh, maybe 37 or so. And Isaac answered and said mm. unto Esau, mm. Behold, I have made him thy Lord and all his maybe, brethren. Maybe 36. Try 36. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go back to... Because guess. now Esau is arriving mm -hmm. after the blessing was already taken mm -hmm. by Jacob. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Verse, just, yeah, yeah just, just, just find somewhere where you can start. <laughs> Let me start so, at verse so number 35. So up to you. 34. 34. Mm. Okay. Or oh, maybe 34 is very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's all right. 34. Genesis yes. 27, verse number 34. Mm -hmm. And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a, with a great and exceeding bitter cry and said unto his father, Bless me, even me also. Also, bless me, even me also. Yes. O oh, my father. Mm. And he said, Thy brother came subtly and hath taken away thy blessing. Mm. And he said, Is not he rightly named Jacob? Mm. For he hath supplanted me. How many times? These two times. Okay, you see now. He's, that's a serious confession because the father is hearing this for the first time. Yes. He didn't know this guy had sold his birthright. Mm. So in other words, he's actually telling his father that what you did was the right thing. Mm. 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 He's hearing this for the first time. But mm. So you guys, you once, had, you once, you once traded it. Mm. There was a transaction before. <sighs> Twice. So this is not the first time. Mm. So what happened before? Uh -huh. He took away my birthright. So what are you saying? So you're no longer the right guy to bless. bless. You're telling me I've just blessed the firstborn. Mm. Mm. If you don't, if you no longer have the rights, the birthright, <laughs> then you're not the you're right no longer the firstborn. First mm. You see how now the red man. Is getting subjected now to the last born, the mm. man who came later, mm. has taken over. Mm. 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 He's become supreme now. Mm. The man that came later is now has now become Lord. They have to start industries yes. so the red the red man can come and work. I have made him Lord over you. Mm. Uh huh. And behold, now he hath taken away my blessing. Two things. He has taken away first my birthright. And now uh -huh. he has taken away my blessing. He didn't realize that the birthright was the actual blessing. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Because you get the blessing on the basis of the birthright. birthright. And by losing the birthright, you have lost the blessing. That's how God blessed the red man. By giving you the birthright. Uh huh. And he said, Has thou not reserved a blessing for me? Reserved a blessing for me. You see, all this he's begging again mm -hmm. the second time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Jacob, even when he came, he never begged for that blessing. He only did what was, what, what was supposed, supposed to be, be done. done. Mm -hmm. He got the blessing. Now he's begging again, the red man. Uh -huh. And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, mm. Behold, I have made him thy Lord, and all his brethren have I given to him for servants. Mm. So go and get a job. If you are ever going to work, you have to be employed, employed. By, him. by him. Even your children shall serve under him. I've made him Lord. I've made you a servant to him, the guy that came out last. Is now the master. Yes. Mm -hmm. I have I given to him for servants, mm -hmm. and with corn and wine have I sustained him. I've sustained him with corn and wine. 
Yes, I will, I, that one needs. We, we, we need. We need the whole day. Just talk about corn and wine, the bread, the body. Wow, mm. wow, and the blood. I don't want to get into that for now, but listen, look at these people now. Even if you had to talk of agriculture now, hey, we have access to vast pieces of land yes. in Africa. These people were once in our place farming and they were sustaining the whole nation. After they got chased away, it's a hunger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. They carried away the blessing over the corn and over the wine. Wow. That which is tangible from the fields and that which flows the wine, even mm. the oil, mm. these guys, they mm. control. Mm. Even the oil in Nigeria, it is never controlled by the Nigerians. Mm. Mm. Ah, can you imagine? They still buy oil. They produce it. It goes out, it gets they, processed. They buy it. Yes. They have to import it again. I have given him the blessing. When the whites left the African countries after colonization, they did not carry the farms. They left everything. The red man was given everything. Yet today, he has to fly all over mm, big the game. globe, looking for the one who got the blessing over the corn and beg him again. Beg him. I told you, Pastor, some time back. Look at Israel. Agri the level of agriculture that you see in that barren land, it's a desert. Mm. But they are exporting the vegetables yeah. to Africa. We are getting fruits from, from a desert place. And yet we have all the land. Man of God, if you look at the way they, they, have, they have structured the agriculture, you know, they, each crop has a tag, a number, mm. and a certain amount of water. It is monitored on computers wow. individually. Wow. Wow. They try to create an environment for these crops to mm. germinate and, and look at how much these people are making. Yet they are in a barren land. Look at our soil. Mm. It's painful. Our weather. Everything is supporting us ah. except ourselves. Why? We are divided in our speech. <laughs> we are divided in our speech. We don't agree on anything. Everything that I'm saying right now, somebody's thinking about churches. Mm. I don't belong to that church. He's for that church. He's for that minister. I don't believe in him. Are we talking about churches here? No. This goes beyond you see? all that. You see? That's the problem that we have. This is beyond churches. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the human race. Look mm. at what has become of us because of what we did to ourselves. Mm. We are selling the thing that makes us better. Places, lands, territories, mountains are being mortgaged right now. Everything is going. And you know, can keep on reading. Keep on reading. And what shall I do now unto thee, my son? Now the father is asking, 
What shall I do unto thee? I have nothing else to do with you. Yes? And Esau said unto his father, As thou but one blessing, How my come? father. What kind of a father are you? How can you have two children and you have only one blessing? Mm. It's a revelation that people must learn from today. It doesn't matter. We are thousands and billions of people on the face of the earth. <laughs> 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 Make sure you are the first one to get the blessing. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yes. Mm. You don't just have the blessing because you are a son. He's still calling him son. Yes. What shall I do with you, my son? Yeah. So all of us, we are God's children, mm. but we are never blessed equally. Mm. Wow. 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 No, we are not. Uh -huh. Bless me, even me also. Even me also. Oh, my father. My father. Oh, my God. Uh -huh. And Esau lifted up his voice ah. and wept. Ah, it's a shame. He's crying for the blessing. Uh -huh. And his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness Listen of the to earth. Listen to what the father is saying. Mm. Who lifted up his voice? Esau. 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 Mm. Look, pastors, look at his volume. Yeah. The decibels. Yeah. Compare him to Jacob. Who prays the most? Oh. The whites and the blacks. Mm. We, Who we. begs God more? Mm. It's the black. Third man. They pray less and they achieve more. Mm. We mm. pray more and we achieve less. less. He made a lot of noise in the tent. Mm. Begging God to bless him. Mm. My father, my, my father. father. It's a shame. <sighs> mm -hmm. And of the Jew of heaven from above. I've blessed him. Mm -hmm. Now he's blessing. Now, now because he, he kept on begging. Mm -hmm. Now the father mm -hmm. has to look for some mm -hmm. fragments. To just give what has just remained. Let me just give you something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Verse 40. Now listen to verse 40. I'm, I have to end there. Mm. And by thy sword shall thou live. You have to fight. You have to struggle. Mm. You have to kill for you to get. Mm. Mm. Ah, my mm. God. You will live by the sword, not by the blessing. Mm. 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 It mm. has to be manual. Every little thing that you get. You have to manually extract. You have to get it manually. By sword, by a shovel, by a hole, by a pick, by a trowel. You, you have to work. You have to work. Go and get a job from your brother. Uh -huh. But now something is coming now. Which everyone who is listening to me must get this part. Because there is still hope. Uh -huh. And by thy sword shalt thou, shall thou live and shall serve thy brother. You serve your brother? Yes. Now we're going somewhere. We're going somewhere. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass, which means what is... Now I'm giving you something that will not be effected today. I'm placing within you an ability which can never be realized today. But it shall come to pass. Yes. When thou shalt have the dominion. When thou shalt have the dominion. So it is at mm. a later stage in your life. Mm. You shall have dominion. dominion. Hey. The red man. Uh -huh. In the future. Mm -hmm. There shall come a time when you will say no to foreign aid. Yeah. There shall come a time when black men will rise up and say no to vaccines. Mm. We have our doctors, we have our scientists. Mm -hmm. Let us support their labs. Yes. Mm -hmm. right, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Let's get into our own experiments mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and let us treat our own people. People. There will, there yeah. will come a time when you shall have dominion mm -hmm. as Africa. And when that time comes, what shall happen? That thou shall break his yoke. The yoke of your brother, which is over your neck. Yes. You shall be able to break it. Uh -huh. mm. From off thy neck. Is that? Mm. That time when that time comes, and I believe that this is the time. 
when Africa has to realize that dominion was given to you. And we start l- discussing on the yoke. Shall we continue working? Shall we continue serving? Shall this slavery mentality continue? When that time finally comes, we have to talk about removing the yoke of our brother from off our necks. Mm. It shall come to pass when thou shalt have dominion. So you cannot be a slave forever as Africa. Thank you. You cannot be begging forever is Africa. There is coming a time, and I believe this is the time, when the blessing of God over us has to begin to manifest. Let us realize dominion. God gave us power. He he introduced us. He placed us here first. And we must look at the resources that God has given to us and say, no, God sent us first to prepare the place for the coming generations god has given us dominion so africans it is time that now we sit and we say everything that these people are using they're getting it from africa why keep on allowing them exploit us destroy us destroy the future of our children the red men hear me you are not fainting you are not dying of this temporal hunger no there is still a future for you you have to learn to say no to the portage these are few beans in the pot look at the future don't sell your birthright tomorrow you are going to require this same birthright and this is going to be the only license that you require that qualifies you for the blessing and you will no longer have it you have sold it now look at what they are doing your children right now that you call educated you are training them so that they become educated slaves so that they can work for the younger brother now we think that we are so educated in africa for what what do we know what they've given to us is what we know. Oh my God. But it is time that we look in the inside of ourselves and say, when God gave us this, he knew that we had the potential. He knew that we had the ability. Let us begin to look at what we have already as solutions. And we say, let us support our own people. Let us equip our own teachers that are teaching our own children. Let us equip our own doctors. Let us, let us, let us equip them. Let us cover them. Let us, let us clothe them. Let us protect them because this is our future. Now for the first time, now you see what is happening. It's amazing to me when I look at the the events, I wonder who has placed a curse over Africa? Why are we this cursed? How can you have Africans in China? Look at what they what they are doing. What they are doing to them. Ah, now let me ask you a question, pastors. Here, very simple question. Very simple. Whether you don't like me or you like me, but this is a question that you need to answer. You have Africans in China being chased out of houses. Why? Because the disease was once called by the Americans a Chinese virus. virus. Mm-hmm. Now, they want to get rid of this stigmatization, right? Mm. By blaming the Africans, Mm -hmm. right? Mm. Now, Africans are being chased from houses. They are staying in the streets, under the bridges. Mm. A black man Mm. suddenly Mm. has become the source of this virus. Now, this is the most amazing thing. And then you have the Chinese doctors coming to Africa. Mm. Mm. And we have the Chinese leaders receiving them you have videos you are looking at what how africans are being treated and you think what is coming to africa is love you think it is age what's wrong with us 
what has made us to believe that they want to save Africa? If the few Africans in China mm. are getting that kind of a treatment, I I I, do, I don't know. I don't. Do we do we think? Do we, do we have the brains? What's wrong with us? Few of our people that are there. Look at how they've been treated. And then you have help coming from the, that same place. Now they love Africa when Africans are in Africa. It can't be love. It is not love. It can't be love. And they come dressed, ready to treat you. And you believe they want you to be treated. These people can do something about numbers. I understand they are saying Africans are dying, blacks are dying in America and so on and so on. All this, you see, this is so touching. You know, an African brother in the States, as black as I am, we have the same blood. If the, this disease is affecting them there to that extent, I cannot be exempted. If that disease comes to Africa, it must also be killing us as well. It can be killing them simply because they are Africans mm. in the United States. And then when it comes to an African who is in Africa, mm. it treats us differently. Mm. Mm. We have to be very, very careful because obviously there must be a justification why Africa has to be vaccinated. Mm. So we don't want a situation whereby somebody brings two separate guns during a warfare. Because if you are not, if you are not careful, you must be aware. If a car comes here and it's a black person who is driving, it can be a different treatment. Mm -hmm. For this particular, because once there is racism in, in, in place or at play, anything can be done mm, 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 to mm, that medication. Mm, 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 yes, indeed. Mm. I can use one treatment yeah. to investigate your condition, uh -huh. which confirms that you are positive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when somebody else that I, I prefer comes, mm -hmm. I can use a different treatment. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So that you keep on piling up blacks in hospitals. Right? And once they are there, that's where they get the disease. It's as simple as that. Most of the people that are being uh, admitted right now, they are so fit, they are jumping up and down, they are not even, and they say, yes, you can still have it and not know. Mm. And then upon admission, some of these people are getting the actual disease. Mm. So that numbers can keep on rising, therefore justifying why Africa has to be vaccinated. We can say in Africa, we have few people because they say, because we are not testing most of our people. That's very true. But you cannot hide deaths. Mm. <laughs> mm. You that, but you can't. You can't. Mm. You can skip testing, mm -hmm. right? But when people are dying, yes. at high magnitudes, mm -hmm. that part you cannot you hide. hide it. You can't conceal that. You can't. You see? Mm. <laughs> so they just want to push so that we are on the receiving side. We are the one begging for the portage. And then the right is taken from Africans. Oh. I'm closing this by reminding you what I said mm. last Sunday when I said we can't have the same people who are saying we are too many. Let us depopulate the earth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's so straightforward you have a man who is coming and he's saying we need to reduce the CO2 yes yes right mm -hmm. which is warming up the globe mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so for us to achieve that let us do well in vaccines ah, of all the things of all what, what okay what, what are you doing with the vaccine mm -hmm. if you are saying he's he said it's we, we are over six billion now Mm, mm. 
getting into seven or maybe into nine billion. Mm. Right? Mm. But if we do well with the vaccines, the vaccines. we can reduce the mm. CO2 Two. and the carbon emissions. Mm. We can reduce that by vaccines. How do you reduce do you by, by vaccines? vaccines. vaccines. Mm. How, how, how do you reduce mm. by, by how do you reduce the population by vaccines? Because it's so clear mm. every African is hearing that that the CO2 can be reduced if we are to reduce the population. Mm. And by reducing That's the important. population, we have to make a good use of, of the vaccines. vaccines. Yes. Why? Vaccine? How, how do you reduce from how do you reduce billion? population from yes? By using vaccines. Vaccine. Now you have that same person being on the forefront. How can you have such a person cooking porridge for everyone else to eat? Yeah. Somebody who says, we are too many, we have too many visitors today here. I'm the one who is going to cook. cook. No. And there's a visitor, you, 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 you partake of that porridge. No, 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 no. Somebody with that kind of a mentality. How can you have a product coming out of one man's hand mm. and every person can consume that on the face of the earth? Mm. So what's wrong. wrong with us it's wrong it's wrong so it's this wrong. is why we are saying we have to realize the dominion yes, yes. and break yes. this yoke yes from off our necks yes and say we can also do this yes we can build our countries yes. we can protect our citizens yes. we can save god from any intrusion we have god has given us that power that ability we have it we have all the resources as Africans, yes, let us stop looking outside. God has given us this. They come here, they are not bringing in any money. Mm. No, mm. they are getting money from Africa. From Africa. From Africa. It's time that we unite. And I can tell you, children of God, if you are to follow what I've just said, and we believe in this one speech, one language, a city can be built in Africa whose head can even reach into the heavens in Africa. Something that even the devil cannot stop because God attested to that. He said, nothing shall be impossible unto them. Their level of imagination and unity, whatever they seek to do, they shall accomplish. We have to go past that level where demons keep on stopping us. God is saying, if you can unite and have one language and one speech, even God himself will come down to inspect your work. Can you imagine development in Africa that demons cannot even stop? What is stopping us? It's not just demons. We are not united. We are not united. Let us believe in this message. God sent you. You, the red man, you were sent by God to prepare a great deliverance for the rest of mankind. You are the source. Take your position. Stop begging. Stop begging. Stop believing in the same people. We've been complaining of late of how these people have imposed the sanctions. Yes. On Africa. Mm. We are the same people. Mm. We are the same people. They have never wanted us to grow. They have never wanted us to become better. And all of a sudden, we are the first ones to be serviced. Not by technology. No. Not by machinery. Mm -mm. No. Or they push into Africa guns. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If they are terrorist, terrorist groups in Africa, they sponsor those. And the medications coming from the same people. Mm. All these years you've been under sanctions. One way or the other, we have been. Now there is a disease. You're the first one to be considered. <laughs> <laughs> Open your eyes. Don't be a fool. Be smart. Think. Think. Okay? Think. Think. Don't just eat and go to bed. Think. Every time you wake up, think. You have to think. Some of these people are not for us. They are never for us. Let's protect ourselves. 
let's realize the dominion that God has given to us. We can do this. We started this whole thing and we can finish it. You see, some few days ago when I came, I said, let's pray. Yes. So that what God has started, he okay. finishes. And let's pray that what the devil has started, he will not be able to finish it. That was prophetic. I was telling people that he has already started working on something. And I said, let's pray. And the reason why I made our people to pray, I'm closing by this. It is because I had seen it. And I know what is happening. I know who can come today and say, Makandiwa is discouraging people from receiving medication. Yet I'm the one who said, Chloroquine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. What a contradiction. Mm. I said, if you have such a man who said it by name, name. Yes. not alone, by name. Yes. Mm. And yet not alone is medication. Before the disease came, prophetically it was picked. Mm -hmm. And you made the recommendation. Now mm. the disease is around. I'm saying this. This is the cure. Let's go. This is the medication. This mm. is the treatment. Mm. How can somebody come and say he, he wants to discourage people from receiving medication? Which medication are you talking about? If I come again and I tell you this is not safe for you, you'll be a fool not to believe in what I'm saying. You'll be, you'll be a fool. Indeed. Indeed. You'll be a fool whether you, you, if you disagree with me on this one, all of you are fools. Indeed. Indeed. Because I'm telling you what is about to destroy you. Do your research. How many women have been sterilized in, in Kenya? In Kenya. Do your research. In India, in India, after vaccines, women could, not con could no longer conceive anymore. Why? Because some people, they want numbers to diminish, reduce population, yeah. depopulate the world. Mm. But it's time that we take dominion now. Yes. We are at that point where we have to realize dominion. Now, if I come today and I say, let us pray for the president of the United States of America. If I say that, today some people will say why not pray for our own mm. leaders mm -hmm. but you look at the events how they are playing out you can see how god has raised that man yeah. he is frustrating their plans mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he's their biggest problem right now yes. that man is their biggest problem indeed mm -hmm. look at how he's protecting his people yes Yes. You know, some, some time back when there was an issue between Iran and so on, that, 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 um, that drone strike that they did. Yes. Iran, yes. Yes. Mm. And now they were threatening that we can actually kill the Americans in, in, in Iran. Mm. Look at what they did. Look at what he said. He said, touch one American. Mm -hmm. He said one. One. Touch one American. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One, just, 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 did they touch even a single one? No, no. not even one. Not, even. not Where even they one. launched, they hit, there were no people there. Touch one. So he was sent. And he makes sure that his people are protected. He was the first one to rush and to go and announce chloroquine. Yes. Yes. They didn't want that. They didn't want that. Why? Because we're busy working on vaccines so that we make more money. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let's mm -hmm. delay the people, yeah. keep them indoors yeah. while we are producing. Mm -hmm. The test, the trials, they are too, too fast tracked. How can you, how can you, because whoever that you give that vaccine today, we must wait for that person after two years. Two years. Yes. And see. Yes. The effects. Yes. Mm -hmm. You can't fast track the after effects. No, you cannot. You can't. Mm. But he rushed because he wanted to alert the other leaders that, guys, this thing now we can treat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all that was needed was for other leaders to rally behind him. Yes. Mm -hmm. But if we say let's pray for him, we are saying because he is the determining factor. Yeah. If he opens up right now and says no law, no, no more shutdown, no more lockdowns, mm. every other leader yes. Yes. also opens. They will open up. Yes, mm. they will open up. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> they will open up. <laughs> if he says open up, while his people are still dying, 
everyone else will follow suit. Will follow suit. You see? Yes. So ah. we are saying we have to consider the future. We have to consider our gen our children because education right now they stopped. Mm -hmm. It's an attack mm -hmm. on education. Children are staying at home. That's yes. an attack. Mm. Some they will not recover from that. Indeed. That's true. Okay? Mm. Hunger has become another disease. Yes. Is that one not killing your people? And what are we doing to protect our people from a disease called hunger? Mm. All that, let's do everything we can to protect our people. Indeed. But all I'm saying is God has given dominion. Mm. We have the dominion. Yes. We were once colonized, but not anymore. Yes. After our independence, let us prove mm. to the worlds outside, mm. out there, that we can do this. Yes. We still can have access to our resources. Mm. Remember my message some years back. I said, let us stop receiving money from outside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If they want to help us as Africans, the machinery. Machinery, yes. If you're going to be mining, let them bring mining equipment. equipment. Mm -hmm. I remember. If they want a portion where they can do something in our countries, in our nations, mm -hmm. let them construct the roads. Let them put hospitals. The same hospitals that we see them building in their own countries. Mm -hmm. let, let them bring the same plan, same model yeah. in Africa. Mm -hmm. Let's not take their money let them bring their intelligence mm -hmm. into our countries. Mm -hmm. Let's develop our countries. Mm -hmm. Let's have the best hospitals. Yes. Let's have leaders from outside come to Africa for treatments. Mm -hmm. Yes. For reviews. Yes. That's right. That's right. Yes. That's right. We must be sending out medications from Africa. Yes. Mm -hmm. We so have that, the ability. We have the resources here. We have. We do. And that's all I can say. I can keep on ah. talking and I can end up getting emotional because this is very, very touching. We have the potential, guys. We have the potential. Mm. Let's do something with that potential. Mm. We can't keep on begging Jacob for the portage mm. that has come from our fields. Mm, yes. Not anymore. This is our product. Yes. All they've done is just to add value. Mm -hmm. They're selling it back to us. Back to us. Mm. Exorbitantly for that. Back man. to us. Mm. Back to us. Look at the leather shoes that we are that, that, that we are buying. Mm -hmm. Okay, the crocodiles are coming from Africa. Mm -hmm. Yes. Huh? Diamonds, gold, gold. You go there and you buy a ring for your wife. You have to go to them. Look at how expensive that thing is. Yet you left the same diamond in Africa. We have to think about this. I know. There was something wrong with us, but not anymore. Mm, yes. Thank you. It shall come to pass when thou shalt have mm. dominion that you shall remove this yoke. Mm. It is called a yoke. Mm. Yes. Why is it called a yoke? Because it controls you. Mm. Once you have a yoke yep. on the neck of an oxen, it means you are using it mm. for your own good. Mm. So that you keep on making profits out of by it. using the Africans. Mm -hmm. There is a yoke on the neck of the African son, mm. African daughter. We are being used. Let's remove this yoke mm. and let's start working for ourselves. Yes. And not to be used anymore. Yes. Our time has come. Yes. This is the message that we need to hear. Yes. Yes. This is what is called independence. Yes. yes. Not when you are still dependent. This is independence. Yes. Let us reach in the inside of ourselves and extract the power that God has given to us. Yes. Thank you so much, pastors, for having me. Thank you. Whoa. Thank you. Mm. It's a message of deliverance, Father. Strong message for Africa. Thank you for championing this message of dominion. Mm. The breaking of the yoke. Mm. Father, as you've released it out of your mouth, deliverance has come and domi our dominion is restored, Father. Mm. Thank you so much, mm. Father. Thank you. Mm. Thank you for settling this 
message on upon the hearts of even our leaders father mm. Mm. those that are leading the africans thank you father mm. thank you so much father thank you you know my father as you were ministering i was thinking about africa i looked at from mauritania to cape town and i see the conflict brother against brother fighting at the instigation of the younger brother and i look at our ability in as far as food production mineral resources from gold to black granite you look at black granite exported into europe comes back to africa you can't buy it and you sit down and you look and like you rightfully said it's value addition but one thing that i am happy about right now is the fact that not only have you been able to align scripture to reality and explain what has been hidden from men but you have gone on to give the african a name when i look at myself today after this message i'm a better african when i look at africa after this message i see hope when i look at africa i see the ability to sustain itself who was going to stand against the younger brother especially coming from just the natural perspective but you coming from god and explaining to us where this is all coming from and how this relates to scripture i have confidence that indeed god is with me today and i have confidence that something that was hidden on the inside of the african man is being brought out to the fore nobody else could do that politicians can't do that other people in society who don't have a relationship with god can't stand up today and and tell us what you've just told us and for that i thank you i thank you i thank god for that <sighs> before you close can i say just a word of prayer thank, thank you prayer. thank you father thank you oh I pray that God helps you realize what he has just given to you. This information is a weapon. This information is an advantage. This information is the key I pray that by the time that you come out of your house when others are in a state of confusion not knowing what to do There shall be a light that will guide you. All that the devil wanted to create by reason of this pandemic. The stress, the poverty, the ignorance against your children I minister life to you today and as much as you are spared from this disease I pray that the opposite is going to happen when all this is over 
May God grant unto you double for your shame, beauty for ashes. You will not struggle to recover. You will not live by the sword. God is moving you into serious dimensions of creativity. It will cease to be business as usual. It's a completely different scope. God is taking you to different heights. Just prepare yourself for what is coming. There is a financial and a spiritual revival that is coming after this. This can never be the end of you. This thing is too small to end your life like this. You are bigger than that. You are covered, protected, surrounded. Your life is insured. In the name of Jesus, may God come to your rescue. And today, we pray. While thousands upon thousands are listening to my voice, I make an official prayer today that this disease has to stay. This disease has to die. And the plague stayed and the disease stopped. And Aaron ran and stood between the dead and the living and the plague stayed. From today, from today, from today, let the sting of this disease be plugged out in the name of Jesus. We are looking forward to seeing our gates opening again, our borders opening up again where we can begin to fellowship, shake hands, enjoy ourselves in nations, countries that God has given us, given to us. Father, in the name of Jesus, we know that you are up to something because what I'm saying is what you have already started doing. We have been praying throughout this week throughout this week from Passover and we declared that at Passover the plague shall pass over us and we are aware of what is happening from that moment from that Passover till today we are receiving news you are destroying this disease we are hearing it we are hearing it keep on doing that great work save your people from the plan of the enemy in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, this thing must start dying now. Those ones getting treatment, even those without the treatment, let the miracle working power of God touch everyone. Every person is covered. In the name of Jesus, every race is covered. In the name of Jesus, I pray for our leadership in Africa. Cover them, Lord. In the name of Jesus, let your mighty hand rest upon them. Give them wisdom needed for the survival of every African nationality, every African person. In the name of Jesus, I know the wisdom is available. Give it to our leaders. Sustain them, give them strength, give them power, give them health in the name of Jesus. That even as they push your agenda of sustaining lives, let them get all the support that is required 
by those around them in the name of Jesus. Minimize disagreements and conflicts amongst ourselves. We pray for nations in Africa and the leadership in the name of Jesus. May this agenda be pushed forward. Help them. Help us realize our dominion in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, thank you for introducing us into this new reality as Africa. Father, we are so thankful. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, this has been a Sunday like none other, a very unique Sunday. Mm. An amazing Sunday. Indeed. If you're watching us out there, mm. if you feel like sowing a seed, if you feel like sacrificing, if you feel like giving to God, please do so. After such a word, not just us, but the world will never be the same again. You know, after, after God heard the children of Israel crying, he went and he spoke to Moses and he says, it's time for my people to be delivered. And deliverance came through the hand of the prophet. Indeed, Pastor S.J., indeed. Such a mighty work has been wrought this morning. by God through his friend. Yes. Mm. Thank you, Father. Father, Thank you. We, are, we are so thankful. Thank you. We are so, so thankful. Wow. A beautiful Sunday this has been. We are grateful to God for what he has done for us. We are grateful for this mighty work that has been wrought by the prophet of God. Ah, glory to God. Glory to God. We can celebrate, we can thank God for what he has done. Deliverance has come to Africa. Deliverance has come to Africa. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for being a part of this broadcast. You've done yourself a massive favor by being here. Remember what the prophet said. When a prophet speaks, what makes his words effective when they come to you is when you observe the conditions of those words. Instructions came and the instruction was to see the effect, to see the results of this, you have to take these instructions and utilize them. If you forget everything else, don't forget the instructions. Don't forget the condition for your deliverance. We are so grateful, Father, once more. Thank you so much. Thank you, Father. The Wallace people are sending their seed. Yes, Father. I would love to have this wonderful song, I think by Hillsong, which is called From Water to Wine. Let it, let's just have it played while as people are sending their seed. People must keep on praying. Deliverance has come. Deliverance has come. We are out of danger. Thank you, Father. Now continue to send your seed. Now we will end the broadcast here, but we will keep the details flighted on the screen right now for you to continue to sow your seed and begin to pray even as you listen to that song from water to wine. Until we meet again next time, stay blessed and shalom. Shalom.